This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello, Internet, Taliesin here, and today we are talking World of Warcraft Dragonflight, and we are talking old gods. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, this is going to be a short video then, isn't it? Because I'm a simple soul and I don't know much, but there's one thing I do know, and that's there are no old gods in Dragonflight. Obviously, because it's a dragon expansion, whether it be one of those twink anime dragons with the long arms, or one of those ones that would be a bit scary except for their little arms. No voidy, tentacly, glowy-eyed nastiness here. No Siri. And, well, honestly, uh, you're wrong. Like, as wrong as you can possibly be. Because right from the very beginning, old gods have been a lingering presence in Dragonflight, and with patch 10.1 now on the PTR, they are well and truly coming out of the um, shadows and look like they're not just set to be a major part of proceedings going forward, but that we are heading for a very big reveal very, very soon. So join us as we go through the entire expansion so far, including 10.1, and look at every single old god reference and foreshadowing we can to try and work out what is going to happen next. Okay? Go, 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 go. Like I say, Dragonflight has made no real secret of its old god undertones at any point, which is fitting really. Don't forget that the Dragon Isles might be a brand new continent full of beautiful Tuscar Adonises and excellent dragon racing spots now, but in concept a landmass called the Dragon Isles has been in the game files since WoW first launched in 2004 as an unfinished and abandoned zone that was originally intended to be playable on release, along with the Emerald Dream, which, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind betting that we end up spending a fair bit of time there this expansion too. And obviously that zone was unfinished and pushed into a 19 year back burner, but do you know what the OG Dragon Isles is full of? Uh, not beautiful Tuscar Adonises, that's for sure. No. Old God Temples. The original concept for the Dragon Isles didn't really have much to do with dragons at all, and instead was meant to be a kind of Rylaire sort of place, riddled with monuments to the void, and naturally when this Dragonflight now was revealed to a rainbow-tastic dragony fanfare, it was only natural that people would wonder how much of that original concept the current team would stay true to, and well, we didn't have to wait very long for our answer. With Old God adjacent themes and events present in every single single episode of the Legacy's 2.5D animation prequels, Galakrond, Deathwing, and a straight-up depiction of the very moment that Neltharion gave in to Old God Corruption on the steps of his gaff in the Forbidden Reach. And this wasn't a retelling of known events, this was explicitly placing the Earth Warden's fall in the Dragon Isles itself, and in-game it didn't take long for players to start noticing other decidedly voidy antics on the Dragonflight beta. Famously, Haughty Chicken, the official nicest streamer in the whole history of the world, discovered a shipwreck off the western coast of the Isles that had a glowing Nazoth eye and accompanying tentacle nestled in amongst long-forgotten treasure. Treasure, of course, something that is traditionally buried and which you need to dig for. And I'm sure that's nothing. And actually, now it definitely is nothing, as in 10.5, Blizz removed the suspicious eye and tentacle and replaced them with Easter eggs, cheeky bastards. Once the expansion went live, the focus was mostly on the exciting new zones and characters that we meet on our levelling journey, with the main antagonists being the Primalists and Razageth. But if you think that means putting the old gods on the back burner for a bit, well, think again. Because of course we find time in all of that levelling to actually go back in time to the Black Empire itself and chat to all of the old gods. The Valdraken time-travelling levelling quests are absolutely glorious, and when we go on our Turbo World Tour of important historical events, chasing Chromie and Eternus, who is definitely, obviously, infinite dragon Chromie if you ask me, through the timeline, the fact that we end up in Nyarlotha as our final stop is a great little twist. But it's no big deal, right? I mean, we've been here before, after all. This is just a reused environment from the 8.3 raid. Uh, well, not quite. Don't forget, that raid took place in a vision of Nyarlotha. This place we find ourselves in the quest is the actual real-life place. And not only that, but all of the old gods appear to be alive at this point, and we get whispers from all of them. Recognisable ones from Cthun, Yashar, Raj and yogg -Saron, but some new ones too, including I know you, what you were, what you will yet be. You will follow him to the dark places. The dark waters will flow in his wake. Since the other three fleshy boys are all accounted for in the whispers, it's
it's fair to assume these are from the Zoth. And here's a rather beautiful theory. I don't know about you, but my character, Mavamwi, still wears the Eye of Nazoth. Because of course I do, and if you don't, you're not doing the game right. Every time I go to a BFA zone, it reappears and I get whispers. Canonically, I am always wearing this thing, which means I was wearing the Eye of Nazoth when I did these quests. Nazoth's eye, which he can see through. Which means that when I arrived in ancient Black Empire times, I took part of Nazoth from our time that has seen everything up until the moment I entered the time portal to a place where ancient, or I guess young, Nazoth was. And that's why he says he knows me, because me arriving there with the eye has instantly shown him the next million years of future events. And I don't know, I just feel like that might be important, you know? I feel like maybe showing a superpowered god who sees every possible future exactly which single future will happen and exactly what he needs to do to prepare for it might have massive significance and consequences. It just feels like it might turn out to be important later on is all. There is one tantalizing other little detail that I love to point out in 10.1. At Vathros Summit, it's to Vathros Tower, that spectacular and instantly recognizable structure in the Azure Span. I was up a mountain there one day collecting a dragon riding glyph, and when I swooped down through the fiery elemental bit, I couldn't help noticing that the environment, well, it's Nazoth, right? And not it looks a bit like Nazoth lol, but it looks so exactly like Nazoth, right down to the three orange eyes and swirly tentacle shaped rocks, that it can only have been designed that way on purpose, in my opinion. But why? Well, honestly, a good enough reason would be because a designer wanted to subconsciously keep the idea of old gods in the back of our minds while we were doing otherwise old god free opening patch stuff. But I think there might be another reason too. Vakthos Tower is criminally underused in Dragonflight. In Azure Span leveling, we defend it from Razgeth, who wants to get something from inside, but no one really knows what. And then we don't go in there ourselves, which is okay, whatever. But then, when Eridicron and his gang are released at the end of the Vault of the Incarnates raid, Alex Draza tells us how the primal Earth Incarnate struck, and I quote, terrible bargains to keep their cause alive. The depths of his depravity unknown even to the other incarnates. And of course, it is impossible to think of striking bargains with dark powers without thinking of our old friend. And then I think about Vakthros Tower again, because those icy spikes on it suggest that Razageth was not the first incarnate to try and get in there. Viranoth has had a go too, by looks of things, so whatever is housed inside is of massive importance to the group of baddies led by the Earth incarnate who struck terrible bargains, and actually with that in mind, the fact that the environment around the tower has been made to look exactly like Nazoth suddenly feels a bit more meaningful. And if Blizz have been impressively restrained in their old god hints in the opening patch, well, strap in, because they are about to put their foot down on the Void God pedal. The Forbidden Reach is so full of old god foreshadowing, it's a bit embarrassing. Like a work colleague constantly reminding you in an offhand way that it's their birthday next week. This is where Neltharion created, trained, and then imprisoned the Drakthir. It's where he fell to old god corruption and used his new old god power to imprison Razageth. And the entire island is just chock full of diaries and letters and other books just lying around the place, which set a suspiciously purple scene. Firstly, there's Naga everywhere for some reason. And found among them is A Song of the Depths, which starts by mentioning our queen calls to us from beyond the umbral veil, which you assume means Queen Ashara, in which case this confirms that she is not on Azeroth at all, or even in our plane of existence, but is currently living it up in the Void Realm right now. Or it could mean someone else. It could mean the Naga have found a new mistress, I suppose. Now, this book also directly references some of Ilganoth's whispers from Legion, saying that their mistress, whoever she is, has transcended ascended the circle of stars, and the torches have been lit. The Oath Stones, perhaps? It talks about a primal power that seeks the end of order, which the Naga's Umbral Masters seek to harness for their own ends, and that the Harbinger, whoever that is, will complete the awakening of a hunger lost to the ages, which to me definitely sounds like Galakrond, who was famously so hungry he ate all the other dragons, and then vomed them up as undead dragons, and then hung out with them a bit, and then ate them again. It does definitely feel like, according to the Naga at least, the forces of the Void 
are keeping tabs on the actions of Eridicron and the Incarnates, it seems almost looking to hijack their plans at an opportune moment. But who is the Harbinger they talk about? This book certainly raises a lot of questions that, unusually for Old God Prophecy stuff, feels like we won't have to wait very long at all to have answered. Another super interesting book that we find on the Forbidden Reach is The Old Gods and the Ordering of Azeroth Annotated, a history book which has been in the game since vanilla, but which in this version has handwritten annotations alongside the established text from an unknown author that we can quite safely assume is Notharian, since this book was found in his private collection. Generally, these annotations are just talking shit about the Titans and how up themselves they are, but there are definitely a few pages which appear to be foreshadowing some more imminent Old God appearances too. In reference to the book saying, the Titans moved and shaped the Earth until at last there remained one perfect continent. Our scribbly friend counters, the author of this tome is either a liar or a fool. Were they truly ignorant of that which lies beyond the waves? Which definitely seems to suggest another second continent in addition to the original Kalimdor, which is the landmass that eventually formed all of the places that we know of in Azeroth. Now, this talk of an extra unknown continent is backed up by another 10.07 book, Return of the Night School, which tells of the famous Night Elf pirate who many years ago sailed to the west beyond the impassable Sea of Storms to plunder the unknown lands beyond and succeeded. Next expansion looking very much like a new western continent pirate adventure and I am totally here for it. The most fascinating nugget here for our purposes in this video though is when the book tells us the Pantheon shattered the old gods citadels and chained the five evil old gods far beneath the surface of the world. The five old gods. The one, two, three, four, five old gods. Oh shit. Now like I say this book has been in the game since vanilla. It has always mentioned five old gods but when Chronicle came out just before Legion and canonized just four it seemed like a retcon that meant that this book was just wrong. Which is fair enough it's an in-world book it's allowed to just be flat out wrong but what's interesting is here we have the book being annotated by someone who clearly knows about the old gods and is probably by now wielding the power of the old gods who delights in disagreeing with just about everything they read in the book but they have no problem with the mention of five old gods. Like the book says, there was only one continent, and Scribbler goes, no you idiot, why are you lying? The book says, the Titans imprisoned five old gods, and they're like, yep, no notes. But wait, here's the thing, because everyone says this means we've got one new old god that we've never heard of, but they're wrong. Amonthal's first plan was to just rip Yasharaj out of Azeroth, tearing him into many pieces and killing him in the process, causing the deep wound of the Well of Eternity in the planet's crust. A result that meant the Titans all agreed that the whole ripping them out of the Earth plan was far too dangerous to try again, which is why they just imprisoned the remaining old gods where they stood, underground. But they only imprisoned three old gods that we know of, because Yashiraj was already dead by that point. And the book says they imprisoned five. So there's not one new old god, is there? There's two. Oh shit. Blizzard definitely giving themselves some scope to have plenty of old god fun in the future here, I think. And if you think that's a lot of old gods, wait until you see patch 10. Point one. Because fam, your little eye of Nazoth ain't seen nothing yet. Embers of Naltharian is basically taking the piss with how much old god seasoning it is adding to the mix. I mean, the whole place is Naltharian's secret underground facility, which he started building when he was just the plain old earth warder, but was fully under old god control by the time he finished. So to take a journey through Aberus is to take a journey through the timeline of Naltharian's descent into corruption in a way. One of his big projects was the development of Shadow Flame, a power that has always been associated with Deathwing and the Black Dragons, but which we get to see the origin of here. Created by the violent forging of fire and shadow elementals, it's really interesting that the shadow forces Neltharion fused with by giving in to the old god corruption weren't just a weapon that he wielded, but something that he studied, experimented with, and iterated on, and in some ways improved. More exciting than that though, I think there is a lot of evidence to suggest that Aberus isn't the only thing we should be worried about down in the Zaralek caverns. I think it's a pretty good shout that there is an old god down here too. When we first enter the caverns with our black dragonflight buddies, Abyssian, Rathian, and Sibelian, they reveal to us that they are being constantly bombarded with whispers the whole time they are there. Something which it takes all of their strength and concentration to resist. There is corruption in the air here, and the assumption is, I guess, that Neltharion brought that corruption with him when he succumbed to the old gods. That the caverns and Abarus are infected through him. But what if it's the other way round? What if the old god corruption was always 
ways here. And in fact, it was Neltharion digging deeper into the ground to start building Avarus, something we know he did before he was corrupted, and getting closer and closer to the hidden old god beneath, which allowed those whispers to overpower him. That would explain why the whispers are so strong, because they are not echoes, they are happening right now. It would mean that whatever corrupted Neltharion is still there, which is very bad news for us. And I think that theory is strengthened by the now pretty famous presence of a little fishy friend in one of the pools in the caverns. This little chap who looks suspiciously like the form the Zoth took to make his deal with Ashara. Definitely suggesting a real old god presence here. But even more interesting than that, everyone's saying that this fish is a representative of Nazoth, but I don't think it is for a really dumb and simple reason. Nazoth's eyes are orange. In every incarnation, his eyes glow orange. His old god eyes, his hat eye, his random flesh eyes out and about, his fish eyes. Obviously, this chap's eyes are purple. So I don't think this is a physical embodiment or harbing of Nazoth specifically as much as it is something which just happens to fish when they are near an old god. You can find the same model in the waters of Najatar, and I think this is pretty strong evidence that there is an imprisoned old god under here, just like there was under the Eternal Palace. Almost certainly, in my opinion, one of those two undiscovered old gods that we read about earlier. And that should really be the end of the video, shouldn't it? We've covered the pretty explicit old god hints and foreshadowing from the very start of the expansion all the way through the current patches and onto the PTR, which should leave us with very little doubt that this story is building to an old god reveal, probably at the end of the Avarice raid. But actually, it gets even better, because it seems that by looking for old gods, we may have been setting our sights a little bit low. And it's all because of that raid, and in particular, the final two bosses in Avarus, the Echo of Neltharion and Sarkareth. And rightfully so, because the end of this next raid is going full on void disco party. Hello everyone, it's me, yet again, extolling the virtues of Squarespace who are sponsoring today's video and encouraging you to take advantage of their brilliant platform, which is infinitely customizable, flexible for any kind of website, and full of beautiful pre-made templates to boot. So we've spent a lot of time tweaking our templates, making sure everything looks just right, and even digging a bit into analytics. But what really makes Squarespace shine for me is its effortless integration system, which is almost as effortless as this ad integration. <laughs> Smooth is better. But honestly, I love the sheer variety and usefulness of integrated tools on Squarespace. Want to start ticketing for your own events? It's all there. Want to open up to donations and tips? Bits, cheers, who needs them? Look at this beautiful button. Exclusive members only zone? Look, there it is. In all seriousness, if you guys can think of some kind of members only content that we could legally, respectfully provide, I'm gonna set this up and build it for you. That's how bad I want to use this tool. And look, I can even pull in our live Twitter feed every single tweet updated 24 seven and actually, you know what? You know, I'm just gonna, Never mind. forget I even mentioned that. How many widgets could you cram into one site? Head to squarespace.com and find out with a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash and Evitel and use code Talies and Evitel to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash Talies and Evitel. Hey Effie, where did my Twitter posts go? Oh, don't know. The Echo of Neltharion is the residual leftover essence of Neltharion in his old gaff, and the various stages of the fight seem to almost tell the story of his corruption. Phase 1 being entitled The Earth Warder, with him using earthen abilities, as you might imagine he would have done when he was a plain old dragon aspect. Phase 2 is Corruption Takes Hold, which apparently sees him start to summon voices from beyond, these faceless ones from the Void Realm, and also cast corruptions on the player characters. And in Phase 3, Three, shattered reality, he is literally just opening portals to the void realm itself, letting hordes of twisting aberrations through. So, you know, not much ambiguity there. And likewise, final boss, Sarkareth, who takes his mission to claim Neltharion's power, which he sees as his inheritance and legacy for his own, remains true to his word, going through a very similar journey during the fight himself, with Phase 1 seeing him use Drakthir abilities, mixed with a little bit of void goodness in Phase 2, a touch of the forbidden and 
then full surrender to his new Voidy Masters in Phase 3, Seas of Infinity, where he is ripping open portals to infinity, chucking asteroids around, striking players with the full gravity of space. Make sure you use some self-mitigation for that one, I guess. And stranding players in the vastness of infinite space, where they appear to start losing fragments of their mind. And look, also, we have to mention it, there's no getting away from it. Sakareth's boss room appears to be on top of an old god prison. The broken chains and swirling physics-defying shattered bricks incredibly reminiscent of yogg Saron's cell in Ulduar. And just like in that room, there's a stained glass window de depicting the old god that is interred there, which will be one of those two new ones I'm so excited about, won't it? Ah. Oh. Well, okay, apparently not, actually, because this window clearly depicts Yashiraj, the supposedly most powerful of the OG old gods that got ripped out of the planet by Armin Thule and killed? He was killed, right? But then if he was killed, why does he have a jail cell? I am very confused. Okay, hear me out. When demons die, they go to the Twisting Nether to regenerate over thousands of years. It's possible when old gods die, they go to the Void Realm to do the same. Could the Titans have somehow intercepted or found Yeshiraj's, I guess, soul in the void or near the void and imprisoned it there to stop it regenerating? That would explain why the cell appears to be in the middle of space, certainly. And it is totally feasible that after millions of years, with no Titans checking in, Yeshiraj might have been able to regain his strength and form anyway, just in time to do some serious corrupting. Or, you know, now I think about it, maybe it's not Yeshiraj at all. And actually, now I think about it, there does appear to be a stained glass window of Yashiraj in yogg -Saron's room as well. In fact, now I think about it, the actual window depicting yogg -Saron was broken to signify the fact that he got out of jail, so I don't know. I guess this cell could basically be for anyone, but someone, probably an old god, certainly an old god, was definitely confined here, and I would like to know who. And both these fights are especially interesting for a reason that you may well have already picked up on. This video is supposed to be about old god foreshadowing, but actually it seems we might have been thinking too small, because there there is a distinct lack of tentacles and fleshy bits going on in this Sakurath fight especially. Instead, it's all about the infinite, the empty, the void itself. Don't forget, the old gods may be our reference point for the void in our reality, but they are essentially just flesh drones created in the void realm with the sole purpose of being fired off into our reality in the hope of landing on a titan world soul planet and corrupting it. They are not valued members of void society, they are weapons. And don't necessarily necessarily represent what we would find if we were able to make our way to the Void Realm proper, and the Sakareth fight definitely seems to confirm this. It turns out that all these hints we've been picking up throughout the expansion maybe aren't foretelling the coming of an old god, but of the Void itself. And that is frankly a much scarier prospect, and a much more interesting prospect, because it opens the door to a kind of Lovecraftian horror that WoW has never really touched before. The maddening incomprehensibility of just emptiness. I think that's hinted at really well with the emptiness between stars ability that I mentioned earlier. Old gods take up space. They fill it with flesh and tentacles and whispers and eyes, like billions of eyes. But the void is just kind of nothing. It's negative space, vastness, silence. Our tiny mortal minds can't comprehend of the kind of being that exists in the space between stars on a different plane of reality. But whether we're ready for it or not, it seems like we might be about to find out. But what do you think? What role will the old gods take in this expansion? Will it be one that we've encountered before? Or one of the two hinted at undiscovered tentacly boys? Will we be skipping them entirely and releasing void lords on an unsuspecting world? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all of our work happen. And seriously, patrons, thank you. Because without you, there would be a whole lot less Taliesin and Avatar. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out. It. Remember, my name is Doran's Movies. No, my name is Taliesin from me and Evertel and the kids and the Zoth and Zalatath too. Cheerio!